I am a 25 year old professional making $67,000 annually. Congratulations. I've managed to save up $33,000, which I am quite proud of. That's really awesome. Which has reduced my, oh, uh, let's see, which I'm very proud of. I decided to undergo a rhinoplasticity surgery that cost me $12,000. Is that a nose job? That is some, Rhino, yeah, I think it's a nose yeah, job. Rhinoplasty is no job. Okay. I thought that's, isn't that the one where like they, they like open your canals up or is that something else? No, right, rhinoplasty is just a nose job. I it's just, just a straight it. nose job. Okay. It, let's see. Okay, so I decided to get a rhinoplasticity surgery that cost me $12,000, uh, which reduced my savings quite a bit. I don't regret it. Um, it was something I wanted to do for a long time, but it has made me conscious of my financial decisions. But let's go over the numbers. Here's a snapshot of my current financial situation. As I said prior, income, $67,000. Okay. Savings, $33,000 in a high-yield savings account. Pretty awesome. We like that. Expenses. Now, obviously, this isn't going to be all the expenses, I would assume, but this is what he sent in. Car loan, $350 a month. That's pretty good, considering the average is like $700. $16,900 remaining at 5.49 APR. Okay. Okay. 5% on a car loan, that's actually pretty good, right, Chris? Yeah, I think right now it's like seven is would be typical for people, but okay. I'm not positive. I've seen stuff I'm not, I'm not, I'm well. not trying to shop for a car, so. No, 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 no. Rent, seen hundred dollars a month. Could be high, could be low, depending on where you live. Other expenses, five hundred dollars a month for groceries, gas, and entertainment. That is very low. It's very low. I'm gonna guess that that's probably not super accurate because whenever someone ends their expenses in a zero, and yeah. other expenses is a zero. If it's a five hundred exactly, it's always wrong. And usually when it's wrong, they under amount it. Yep. And before we get into more of it, I do want to talk about the rhinoplasty thing. I know most financial advisor people would be like, oh, I can't believe you would do that. That's such a stupid waste of your money. I don't think that way. If it improves your life, getting your nose done and making you feel better about yourself, getting better in any area is getting better in all areas. How you do anything is how you do everything. So if you, if it was a good amount of money. I mean, before that, you had $45,000, and now it's $33,000 in a high-yield savings account for your emergency fund. You have a huge emergency fund. Do what you want with your money. I'm not going to tell you anything. It sounds like the $12,000 for the rhinoplasty surgery, if you're happy with it, was a good financial decision. So good on you. I've also maxed out my Roth IRA and starting a company's 401k match at 3%. That's pretty good. Good. Even better. I don't have any other debts and I've really budgeted and I've never really budgeted because I'm naturally pretty frugal. Cool. Uh, my recent surgery was a splurge that I don't foresee repeating. That's good. That's good. I, if you got a nose job and then you had to get another nose job to fix the first one, that would be, that'd be pretty bad, but I'm sorry. I don't mean, I don't mean to be nosy into your life. Um, except for when I eventually save up for a house uh, for a down payment. Okay, cool. So here's the dilemma. Here's what we're working with here. I'm contemplating whether I should pay off the remaining $16,900 on my car loan. Again, the loan is at 5.49 interest rate. And the monthly payment is about $350. If I pay it off now, I will still have about eight months worth of emergency funds left, which provides some peace of mind for me. The payoff quote for the loan will add an extra $78 a month to my payment starting in 12 days, which is pushing me to consider this decision more seriously. Uh, what does he mean by that, Chris? I have zero idea. So the payoff quote is basically where it says like this, if you make this payment, you're going to be able to pay it off. So interest rates typically don't increase unless he, it's actually a she, but unless she has been under paying the amount of money she's supposed to have on the loan. And now the loan is expiring. So now she needs to, so now she needs to catch up. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. So that's the only thing I can think of. Cause that doesn't make so much sense to me that the rate would increase based off of some mm. sort of an agreement, unless they had some weird agreement that I'm unaware of. Yeah. I don't, I don't know about that. My 2023. Yeah, if you know what that means, put it in the comments. Please. I have no idea. Yeah. We've never heard of that. 
By 2023, Subaru was a joint decision with my dad, who generously contributed $15,000 towards the down payment while I added an extra $5,000. I know buying new wasn't the best financial move, but it's done, and I'm happy with the car. I kind of disagree with that. Like, I get it. I get both sides of the token. I think it depends on what you buy. If you buy a Corolla for $23,000, you pay it off, and you, you, you know, you use it for 20 years. Um, what's the problem with that? That's my thought. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with that. When it comes down to like, it wasn't a good financial decision to buy this new car. It sounds like it was like, it's, if you're going to use it for its entire time, it sounds like it's a fine financial decision in general. Is it mm -hmm. typically cheaper to buy a used car than a new car? Yes, typically it is. But right now the used car market and the new car market is still a little weird. She might have gotten some incentives for buying a brand new vehicle that reduced the amount. And again, if she's going to keep it for its lifetime, she's going to treat the car, do its maintenance, do all that stuff. And she's not planning on selling it in two years to buy a brand new Subaru to keep up with current trends. Then, yeah, it's a wash. So as long as she's happy with the car, go for it. If someone's unaware, and they're like, I don't know what I want to do. And I, I really don't have many thoughts either way. I would say, yeah, typically it's probably better to buy a used car that's a year or two old. Um, but if you go into it with intention, as long as you have intention and you're like, this is my thought process, you can explain to me your thought process, then whatever you decide is right. The big question, should I pay off the car loan entirely now or continue making the monthly payments? Paying it off would reduce my financial obligations and free up cash flow, but it would reduce my emergency fund as well. I'm hoping to... I'm hoping for a raise in December, which might change my financial situations. But with that being said, any insights or advice would greatly be appreciated. Thank you. Debt free in my site. Should I pay off the car tonight? Hmm. Nice. Interesting. Interesting. Me personally, right. I wouldn't even factor in the raise until it's you happened. Wouldn't? No, it what, hasn't happened. How, so, so how it's long like, till it? Till, but it says that they said it starts in twelve days, which at this time has already happened. Yeah, from, before. So I would. I mean, I would definitely factor it in because it's happening in twelve days. It's not like it's six months out. It's it's in like two weeks. Well, no, I'm talking about the raise in December. Oh, they're raising December. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would yeah, factor yeah. that in. Yeah, yeah that's sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I thought I you meant know. the raise in interest rates. No, no, yeah, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. I get, yeah, that was. I should. I, the financial windfall of the raise. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um. Yeah, I would disregard just disregard it altogether. The, the whole story is hogwash. No. Let's. What. What is the. What is. What do you got for us, Chris? What do you got for us? So first off, I like to say that you're spending twenty four thousand twenty four hundred and fifty dollars a month. I'm going to assume that's probably on the low end. It's probably higher than that because it's ending with a zero, and most times it ends with zero. It's wrong, uh, and most times when it's wrong, it's off. But you also said you're a very frugal person. Either way, 2400 2500 if that's the case, is still super low. If we pay off the car, that $2,450 goes to $2,100 a month, which is great. And at the end of the day, if you're making $2,100 a month, that means you're living on $30,000 a year and you're making $67,000 a year. You're basically saving 50% of your income. You are doing excellent. So ultimately, whatever decision you choose to make when it comes to the car, paying it off or not paying it off, you're going to be just fine. So I want to start off by telling you that. Either way, you're going to be just fine. But let's look off that. So the payoff quote loan will add an additional $78 a month to your payment, and it starts in 12 days. So that's going to take your loan amount from, and I don't understand why it's going to increase. I, I don't get that. I would ask your loan person why that is. Um, I've never heard of that, but I'm just going to take you at your word for it. And there's probably something I don't know. And that's totally fine. I don't know everything. But that's going to take your loan from three fifty a month to four hundred and twenty eight dollars a month, which is a twenty two percent increase. How do you feel to hear that you're now going to have to pay twenty two percent more on your car loan because the interest rate's going to hike? For me, I would not like that feeling. And if I had an additional money to pay it off, I would get rid of it. Also, knowing that. For someone, I don't know what work you work in. You have to decide for yourself how quickly can you find a new job. But I typically recommend for young people that they have three to six months of expenses. And that all, that of course is completely dependent on if you have dependents on you, how quickly you could find another job. 
I don't know any of that stuff, but you're 25. I don't know if you have kids or anything like that, but you currently have eight months of um, emergency fund. I think you said, even if you take that down, cause you're spending $30,000 a year. If you take your emergency down to $16,100 by paying off the loan, you'll still have six months of emergency fund available to you. If you really are living off $30,000 a year. So you're still just fine. And you're still saving a bunch of money into your Roth and you're saving a bunch of money in your 401k. So let me just tell you about the framework that I typically work in when I'm trying to figure out what's going on here, what to do with these things. The first, I call it the four Fs. So the first thing is I have to frame the question. And in reality, the question that this person asked me is, should I pay off my car or should I just keep on making the monthly payments? But I ask myself, is that the real question this person is after? Is that really the question? And be honest with yourself too. You can use these four Fs for yourself. So what is the decision that actually you're asking for? What is the question you really want to have answered? The question that you probably really want to have answered is, am I making the right financial decisions with my money? Was the rhinoplasty thing right? Did I do the right thing with the car? And I've already said, yes, yes, you did. So frame the real question. The question I don't think has anything to do with the car because this, regardless if you decide to pay it all off at once or pay monthly, it's probably not going to really change your financial trajectory because 80% of being good with money has to do with your habits. And you already have really good habits. So this other 20%, while 20% is important, yes, it's not going to make a meaningful difference in your life at all. So frame the real question. The real question is, am I doing right by my money? You are. But let's say you weren't or you didn't know or you weren't asking me. I would first, first dig down, find the real question. After that, you want to do a fact find. So go through all the steps and start to find out all the information that you need. Why am I getting a rate increase? If I do, if I pay it off, it's going to cost me more in the long run. Do a fact finding mission where you're looking into that. After that, I want you to make a final decision. Choose to either pay it off or don't pay it off and do it monthly. Whatever choice you decide, you stick with that choice. You don't look back because you can't undo the past. But then for our fourth F, we follow up and hopefully we made the right choice. But if we didn't make the right choice, what can we do now to rethink it and make a better choice sooner rather than waiting? So if you choose to pay it all off, you can't go on, you can't go back and undo that. But if you choose to go on a monthly payment, you can choose the next month, once you got that $428 bill, this isn't working for you. And you can choose to just pay it off at that point. So that's my 4F framework. I use it for everything. Frame the real question, back find, make a final decision, follow up on that decision. Because that final decision is not always final. You can always follow it up with a, new, with a new decision. That's awesome. I like that. Yeah, I hope that helps. And um, best of luck. Best of yeah, luck. Either way, you're going to do just fine. Yeah, you're sitting good. I mean, 50% savings rate is crazy. I mean, even if the you know, even if the expenses are off by a little bit, and it's a little bit higher, 40% savings rate is still crazy. Unbelievable. Yep. So Very. keep it up. And remember, for someone who is also very frugally minded like myself, remember to live life too. Saving money is great, but also live life. It's very important. And it's a message that I want to tell everyone who is super don't spend money. Absolutely. This video podcast is sponsored by Mons on Wealth. The content in this podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice. We do not endorse specific products or services. Past performance does not guarantee future results. The opinions expressed are those of the hosts and guests, not the podcast sponsor. It is crucial to consult with a qualified financial advisor or professional who can provide advice tailored to your specific needs before making any financial decisions, investments, or taking any other actions. If you are seeking specified help, you can reach out to Chris at monsonwealth.com.